$6.99. This is Wrecker, Hunter, Echo, Tech, and Crosshair. Obviously, we are different. We're all you're getting. Ha! We're all you need! They call themselves the Bad Batch. Experimental Unit Clone Force 99. The defective clones with uh, desirable mutations. This is one meeting I don't want to miss. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Dad Batch Podcast, episode 88. My name is Stevie Kicks, and I am one of your four hosts today. And of course, with us, as always, the other Dad Batchers, your space daddies. First up, he's the real-life cross dad with a sparkling personality. It's Brian Cook. How are you, man? Sometimes. <laughs> Interesting I'm headwear. Uh, Hello. Yes. Get, getting ready for the hunting season? Keep my hair in place. I, I feel faster with it on. Checks out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> next up, specialty costume manufacturer and painter extraordinaire, Alpha Ignition himself. It's John Rodriguez. How are you, man? Hi. Good. Did I, How are you? Did I, roll, did I roll the R's? Rodriguez. Oh, yeah. Geez. Oh, my. Yeah, that was exaggerated, obviously. Oh, we need um, someone that can do a Tarkin to say, John Rodriguez. <laughs> Rodriguez. We'll ask, uh, um, what, what's his name? Steve? We'll get, we'll get Steven. We'll, I'll ask Steven Stanton to do it. Dude. He doesn't like him on. There you go. Him on. Uh, next up, this is my partner, Pabu Frick. Yes. Which you can call him <laughs> Ramy Shanaday. What's up, Pabu? How are you, man? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. <laughs> I'm here. You, so you, I mean, you gotta, you gotta tell the listeners where where this uh, nickname Pabu Frick came from. <laughs> so, so uh, Sebastian did a set of photos for um for for Katarina and Issa Cruz the, to, for to, as a thank you for all the bracelets that they make, and uh, in in it he like did it like Polaroids where he like named every he put everybody's name underneath the picture and for mine he didn't want to just do Rainy so he put Pabu Frick and I I saw it and I died laughing and it, it occurred to me Hello, that that I hi Pabu Frick. <laughs> it actually sounds like he said Pabu. Um, <laughs> I thought it was so funny. I went and I checked to see if the Instagram handle was available and like usually you can like type it in and it'll tell you and it didn't say anything one way or the other and so i hit okay and it just sort of did it and i'm like i guess i'm gonna leave it so here we, <laughs> so here we are so now my Perfect. instagram handle instead of it being boring our shanaday it is now Bufric. so now that you've rebranded i can rebrand as well and and because we're gonna have yeah, to but, do new cards anyway right because you, you it's not gonna be our our shanaday oh anymore. right but yours so, is, yours is already oh. cool it's You're, not. See, like I went, from, random I, went, I went from mine being my name to something fun. John Yours I is something already better. something fun. No, John, something you, you died real. this before, Rodriguez. Yeah, we're not doing that yeah, one. Yeah, it's actually the Z that needs to be rolled, not the R on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, since since we have to make new cards and stuff, so we're going to. I'm going to mess our Shanaday. Was, it's still there it's still available i'm sure i think i have a i think i have a problem with change <laughs> we all have a problem yeah, with change a lot of people remember, do yeah yeah remember when you tried to change the theme song for the show? Thank you. Uh, that lasted one, one none week. of us none of us were fans Forget you guys. uh joe lara our tech dot bad batch is off this <laughs> week he's uh spending he some well-deserved time with some family taking some time off he'll be back uh next week i think uh, but how's everybody doing? How's everybody's week? What day is it? Nodding, yes. Okay. Yeah. What Wednesday? Day? Oh, it's yeah. Wednesday. I'm trying to think of what I've done. It be last, Wednesday. Last time we met was uh, Wednesday. Yep. Yeah, yep. Was last Wednesday. Wednesday. Yep. No, no, it was Thursday. Thursday last week. 
That's okay. why. Already, already false fake news. You just lied to everyone, right? I'm doing good. The weather has changed. It is so nice now. We're in the high 70s, 80s. S- sun's been out. It's been feeling good. It's almost lake time. Good painting weather, huh? Beautiful lake sunsets. Time. Yeah. I don't have anything to paint, but it is nice painting weather. So been getting some stuff done around the house. Some outside yard work, clean up, preparing for the nice warm days. <laughs> we did our taxes, so we're ready to uh, oh, start start work on that backyard. Nice. So, you know what? I just let the kids, I just put a piece of paper and some crayons in front of the kids, and I was like, draw the backyard. Just just tell me what you want. Weren't and you supposed now, to have that done a while ago? Yeah, don't tell the HOA. But uh, yeah, there's a there's a barbecue pit in the center. There's a fire pit. There's an alligator pit. There's a trampoline. Oh, um, I can help you fill that if you want. Yeah, there's there's a whole you know what do you? I'm surprised they didn't add like a a a fighting like a a, a fighting <laughs> ring for for Godzilla and, and Kong. An island in the middle of a yeah moat, with a moat around it like yeah. <laughs> Um, so Ramey, someone pointed out in the chat that you didn't, ch- oh, never mind. You're, you were saying, no, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't, it um, was accurately pointed out that I hadn't changed my byline on the, the head, the thing here, but it is now fixed. <laughs> but so. it, yeah. I looked over, I read it and I looked again and you got changed it. So um, Too quick. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? Um, uh, I'll go next though. Oh, are you, I'm so, I'm, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, this sure. is, this is open forum. Get it. Oh, Round table, I, baby. Uh, on Sunday, I had a game and I kind of hurt my foot a little bit, um, so I gave it a few days um, rest. And I played today, and I it, it still hurts. It's not swollen though anymore. It still hurts, but uh, I, I was able to play just fine, so that was good. Um, I guess the other, uh, yeah, that's it. That's it for regular stuff. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, that's it. Prep, yeah, I hate, I hate yeah. when you tease us like that. Really? I don't know. Well, because ha- some stuff I have for the the workbench. So yeah, I was about to, I was okay. gonna spill that. And I'm like, no, wait. But then also, um, this is next month, but Amy's birthday is coming up, so we've been like organizing stuff and um, reserving a, a park, and we're gonna get this jumper thing. And oh, you know. did you buy the Millennium Falcon jumper? No, no. it's only fourteen thousand. Wait, how much was it? Fourteen thousand? Something. Fourteen thousand? Yeah. Bro, it's a Millennium Falcon. I mean, I, it's worth it, I'm sure, but it's out of my price range. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, homies in the chat. We could... I'm okay. <laughs> what? Ramey, how, how you doing, man? I'm good. Uh, I had another week where I had to go down to the office and everything. So yesterday and today I was uh, driving back and forth, but that's it. I For the foreseeable future, I don't have any, no travel that's going to necessitate me going down there the way that I have been so. Hopefully I can stay home. Otherwise, yeah, uh, yeah work and I worked on some workbenchy kind of stuff over the weekend. We'll, John and I'll both talk about it a little bit. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll talk about my stuff on the workbench. Cause you know what? Other than just like coming home, doing work, uh, it's like same old, home, same old. Doing right? Yeah, it's been monotonous, man. It's, I'm just trying to yeah. save. I'm trying to save up for, um. What, what is it? Uh, oh. Celebration celebration tickets are going on sale in two and a half weeks. That's right. And I I'm forgot trying to, to save up save up for that. And then Comic Con stuff I think is dropping too soon. Yeah. Hey Steven. Yeah. So the the Millennium Falcon Bouncy House uh-huh. it's on it's on sale nine thousand dollars. Just saying. Is that a real? That's the that's a real price nine thousand dollars that thing. It says yeah. it's re- regular price is eleven thousand four hundred ninety five, and it's on sale for eight thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars. Insane! That's insane. It. That's in stock, that. ready in stock, ready to shoot. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, there is one thing I'm doing uh, this weekend. Uh, I, you guys know uh, Scott Wynn, Star Wynn Props. Yeah. On Instagram, uh, he's doing that fan film, the Mando Civil War fan film, um, and I have like a really small part in it, so I'm gonna drive out there. Right about and, it. I have like one a one line sentence and that's it. Um but it looks cool. It, it looks fun. Um and yeah, I'm going to do that this weekend. So Friday and Saturday I, I I should be there. 
That's it. <laughs> Hold on, you got. I'm, I'm gonna. I want to show you guys this photo. Look, oh. that's a kid. That's a big... Photoshop. That's fake. No, because look, no. look at look at the things on the back. The little no inflator thingies. No, that's what do they call like, those? That's like when you it buy is... something on Amazon. Hold on, no, no, like, no. Literally, it's Photoshop. It, I, wait, it wait, is, got... no, wait. I, Amy has bounced on it. It is that big. It's huge. It's huge. It's, worth, it, it's, it's two 15, stories. Thousand dollars. Yeah, it's two stories. Watch, and there's I, a slide inside and everything. Hang on, I got uh, the listing here. I got the listing. D oh, that's oh it. My. Yep, that's it. There's li it's two stories inside. Wow. I, I like lost that's... Amy. Amy went up somewhere, and I was like, "Oh, they're gone. do they have interior uh, photos, Ramy? Interior? <laughs> yeah, you could have. You could. You could live a full in it. video walkthrough somewhere. That we Dude, there's got to be. I just want to sit in the cockpit. I mean, don't we all? Okay, here's here's inside. Wait, is, is that it's got the hollow oh, table? Dude, it's, it's got it's got everything. the cigar table on the bench. Is that a gonk droid sitting there? Like in the middle? I don't know, but I want it. There's an R2D there's Wait, an R2D2 part of it. Look what? That. Look at that. There's a R2 D2 there's the cockpit. There's the cockpit. It's like Galaxy's no. Edge. Wait. It's the same, right? There's like a slide and stuff. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole like slide Galaxy's Edge. It. Look at that's like the, the bed. Like the little bed thing. Mm-hmm. Dude, it's really impressive. I would I would inflate this in front of my house and just shut down the street. Just put that in your backyard. <laughs> yeah, that exactly. Fit. That would Steven, oh, yeah. Steven, yeah. odds it, are it your fit. backyard's gonna cost more than nine grand anyways. Just do this and save some money. I think you're right. Just lay just down some turf. So the, put some turf so down the, and then yeah. the, the ramp there is basically just connected to the your, your back the screen door. door. <laughs> just to open the slider. it up and go out straight in. <laughs> My you kitchen's just the a docking bay. Yeah, dude. Just 24 hours of generator sound. There's a vi there's a video. That's true. Oh, I, don't know. I don't know if there's gonna be sound. I'm not even gonna play the sound or whatever, but holy crap, that thing's huge. <laughs> it's how's it chewy? Is it a giant chewy? When I took Amy, there were like 20 kids in it at once, and they were all you couldn't see any of them. They were all but it, it, like deep in how's there. How's this like, dad? He's just off. Yes. Oh, I want it so bad. <laughs> it's insane. And that height is like probably five feet tall or so. So we could walk like hunched, hunched a little, you know? Oh, he changed masks. Wasn't that nice? Oh, what? Nice. You mean that wasn't a stormtrooper? Look. Why, oh, no, why has this people. never been at like a convention or anything? Dude, they could charge. If they had this at Comic Con, they charge guys, you five bucks to go in it. Amy's wait, been John, on one of these. Wait, yeah. Where was where where did okay. you guys so every year? I don't know if it was Thanksgiving or what, or like they do it for Easter too. There's a target uh, in Eagle Rock that that like sections off half of like the, the parking lot and they do like a little little inflatable like slides and, and it's like a it's like you pay with tickets to get in or whatever. And like you pay two tickets and you go jump on the thing for what ten minutes and then you hop out and you go whatever. And nice. we go every year just because it's close by. Uh, what was it? Pumpkin. It was. A, it might have been for Halloween or something. And it was just there. And we're like, I'm like, go for it. Get in there. And literally, she walks in. She's gone. I'm like, I can't even see where this girl went. Oh, like, call me next time they have it. Call me. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Nine we grand. Need to... Nine grand. But that's kind of not that bad, actually. Right. Look at look at the look at the <laughs> upstairs. Look at that. I think I think once you add on like the blower fan and stuff like mm. that, it's probably there's probably more pieces that you need to actually. Did you notice it had like four fans on it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it needs a lot of juice probably to to run. Guys, it's the Millennium Falcon. It's impressive. Yeah, <laughs> it was really neat. It's basically Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the coolest thing I've ever seen. I want it. Don't we all? Let's split it. I know a lot of times in this beginning segment too, we talk about things we watch, but I think I think we already got that lined up for Hunter's hard drive, right? So yeah, it, absolutely. I think everything we're watching is based on that. So. I would be remiss to bring up what I'm watching. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's accurate. Yeah. Mm. Do you guys watch Shogun yet? I have been watching it, okay. and then I, I, I stopped. Okay. Shogun and it's Masters it's, of Air. This, I need to finish. The season They're is cool. finished now for Shogun, so you can. Okay. Yeah, Masters of Air too. Same thing. I haven't finished that either. Masters. Uh, the problem is, is I, I, I was watching them, and they're cool. And then I just, I have so much going on. I just like, you better sitting, hurry, dude. Staring and watching that stuff. What? You I better still hurry. Cause, cause as soon as, as soon as bad batch is over, uh, we've got 
Rise. Wait, what is it? T- Tales of the. Yeah, but those are going to be. Tales of the Empire. Those Tales of the Empire. Be. And then right after that, we've got the Acolyte. The Acolyte. And then right after that, we've got Rings of Power Season 2. Ooh. See, I think I have time then, to catch up on all that other stuff when Bad Batch is over. So, Dude, it's consecutive. And what we're talking oh. about. Oh, and Invincible. Oh. We haven't even finished Invincible. I, I haven't even. Well, no. We, so that started, last episode was the last episode of the season. Okay. I started watching Invincible. I also started watching um, Three Body Problem. I, that's the show I need to keep watching. That's when I haven't uh, picked that. That's on Netflix. So it's it's like an uh, extraterrestrial thing. And you know, there's a prequel show to that, that 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 I didn't even know about. I heard someone say like, "This takes place after this thing," and I don't even know what that thing was. So it must be something that's available. Is that the show that has the 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 opening scene is the massacre and in, in where they kill the dad in China or something? Yes. No, my, I'm, my thing it's is not ma- it wasn't a massacre, but I just like up on a. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. okay. I think I started it. There was a couple shows on Netflix I was watching too. Something Ninjas and some other thing that was kind House of, cool. of the Ninja or House yeah, of Ninjas. Yeah, yeah, same thing. I never. Yeah, I lost interest. It, it's not even that lost interest. There's too much going on that I need like you know less things to distract. So. And we already have shows we're like married to that we have to watch. So it's hard to like hop on other stuff or like find the time. You know. When's Skeleton Crew coming out? Is that coming out this year? Ain't that the million dollar question? Gosh darn. <laughs> holiday Maybe in season. December. Yeah. Holiday, holiday season for that Ain't one. Ain't that the, the damn, we, damdest question? Are there any we movies don't... coming out soon? No. Actually, Star Wars you know, Kong? I haven't seen Kong yet. So. No. I, I did like, I know we talked about it uh, in the news a few weeks ago, but I do like that they're shifting the schedules back for these Star Wars movies. Um, I think I think Ramy had said they're moving it back one year, and then and then Christmas time, right? May May of twenty six, and then another one in December of twenty six, and then each December after that. Yes, yeah. Hmm. I like that. I like watching my star. I like. I don't know what it is. Like having st- my Star Wars movies in Christmas, it just feels right. Yeah, I, I, May- I can. Yep. May twenty fifth is a big day in Star Wars movie release history, and then yeah. December, late you know, mid to late December has always been popular too. Yeah. Oh, what's uh, what's everyone trooping? May the fourth. That's like in a couple of weeks. Oh, I think May second we're going to Disneyland with people. Is that is that a thing, Ramy? Uh, you, you, you and I are. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and and Jason, Jason, uh, and um, so New Hope Workshop. Yeah. What are you guys doing? Uh, Jet Street Inc going uh yeah it's it's one well. it's a star wars nights you know they've it's got one the of star the star wars, wars nights, nights things oh but i think we should go in costume because i've never done these before. oh you guys just got tickets you're no, going no one told me anything i I, a... I was invited i i got the ticket through a trade i got the ticket through a trade so i don't Same. know anything. i didn't i didn't actually get tickets yeah i didn't somebody, either yeah. somebody got them me, invited you, th- so. you think i got tickets you think i yeah. got tickets come well, on well may may 2nd is what uh thursday thursday i mean if anybody I'm not doing anything Thursday night. So. Can you buy Steven's a ticket? Like, if, uh, anyone's got anybody a... who has an extra ticket, they want to sell uh, me. Are, are uh, they sold out? Is that how it works? I oh, yeah. Sure. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I don't they know. They sell out big time. I just saw a thing that like Star Wars posted. Like, well, it was the first Star Wars night or whatever. It looked cool. It's always fun. Because yeah, they have some in late April too, right? It's like mm-hmm. I heard someone's going like, oh, I'm going to the 20-something of April. Like, oh. Well, Nate is trooping a AMC Star Wars movie marathon. Nice. Angela is going to a MMC troop at a local comic shop. Nice. Uh, Wait a second. Nate is are also you... doing a Chicago Fire game troop for Chicago yeah. Fire. That sounds fun. Star Wars night. Remy and good. John, aren't you supposed to be going to the Phantom Menace screening on May third? No. No. Not, oh, I thought we were doing it, something. For it, it was it was mentioned once, and then it never got mentioned again. And so I'm doing something very special on May fourth. I don't want to talk about it until. <laughs> Why'd you mention it then? It's it's Star Wars related, and th- it's not like there's an NDA or anything. It's not it's, one of those things. It's Star just Wars. Ad- it's Star Wars adjacent. Kind, um, I guess. What? Mm, adjacent. I mean, come on. Is it though? It. It's not for us. What? 
I will oh, be trooping so the good. Charlotte FC football club. Oh, dope. Star Wars night. Dude, May all the, the all the clubs. Yeah, dude. That's good. As of now, I'm bringing Crosshair, but if there's no Vader, I have to switch to go Vader watch some goes. footy, dude. Hell oh, yeah. The footy ball. ATL Star Wars night. Yeah. Austin Austin lives in uh, in uh Atlanta and he, and he yeah. goes to yeah, I think I see he goes yeah. to the games once in a while. I'm gonna show up there and I'm gonna go. He's here, he's there, he's <laughs> every freaking where hey. Ignition. That was yeah, what happened to those intros, man? That That's came what it's gonna sound so like quick. too in my helmet. <laughs> Hold on. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm looking for I'm going online right now to see if anyone has an extra Star Wars night ticket. Oh, that's a good time <laughs> to do that. Maybe start the next segment. Yeah. And no, John, no. I, I told oh. you in the I told you in the private chat what, what Steve did, just is. realized. Yeah. It, yeah, it's not a secret. I knew. Right. <laughs> uh, pinky's out when you guys do that. Just saying. Have... It'll be fun. Yeah. I, I did it last year. Stephen wasn't there. Um, Wait, did I know that? So Anybody it'll be fun to be up there with him this time. Star Wars Night. Oh, yeah. We're literally, <laughs> literally putting the show on hold while yeah. Stephen tries to get Star Wars Night tickets. This is good. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, what else? Yeah, I feel like we should pay, play the test pattern thing for a minute here. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think. I don't know. I'm oh. This is important and, stuff, dude. Important. But while, while he's searching, I also uh, uh, um, work has been picking up a little bit in, in the background, boy. the background world. Yeah, so I uh, I did one thing a week and a half ago, or two, I guess two weeks ago now. That was just a one day gig, but I just got like a three week gig or two oh. two week gig. Damn. Yeah. Uh, you you guys know about it, yeah. Yeah. But I, I didn't know it was that weeks. long. Yeah. Yeah. So because the fitting was for six outfits for six changes so it's going to be like that many days in dude. in the in the thing which just is love that just, push broom on your face dude, dude. and it's oh, funny what yeah, it is it's, it's a, yeah another late 80s early 90s aesthetic is there uh, just no one out there with it and you well, show up and well i'll say i i did something last year that you guys knew about yeah and out of all the people with the mustaches and i'm not saying me but, but I, it was like a, a consent a consensual vote through Throughout, throughout that I had the nicest mustache. Of the group. <laughs> it was kind of like they everyone had kind like, of agreed. I you other saying, people I'm just saying it wasn't me. I didn't vote on anyone's mustache, but everyone kind of was like, "You're the guy." Listen, they like, told you the you give the best mustache rides. I get it. That's cool. It's fine. Mm. What? Where's that? That's bait. Test okay. Can you mark that? that? Test? Yeah, that, that's bait. Yeah, I feel like I should yeah, play the test pattern thing right here. Steven's still looking <laughs> online. That's bait right there. He's looking up mustache. Uh, right. But yeah, yeah. Um luckily, yeah, he's Googling that. But yeah. Anyway, go ahead, Steven. Uh okay. Uh thank you everybody for tuning in. Our listeners literally make this show possible. So if you'd like to show your support for the pod, pick up your brand new crosshair space daddy shirt and stickers. Dadbatch.com. Guys, there's I was looking at the site right before the show. I mean, they're We've come out with some pretty cool stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a dad batch um, apron and you can use it. Mouse like, pad. For, you could use it like while barbecuing or while in the workshop um, or cutting hair. There's some shower slides, which are really cool. You can wear those to the beach yeah. um, or to the shower. There's a tiki batch, any pack tiki and batch. Like you could be really, you could be really cool and like wear it across your body, cross body. Yeah. Cross body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, cross of course, body. there's the big nozzle energy push shorts. Should have made those jorts, but that's a different story. That's an option. We have to look. I, I think one of my favorite things though is the uh, the dad batch approved sticker, because you could just like order a stack of those and you could just slap those on anything. Slap Prove everything. Yeah. Just slap approved. it on your mom and just you're approved. Wow. Mom. Wow. That's, wow. That's all right. <laughs> Do that. Oddly specific. Uh, uh, <laughs> there's there's some good stuff on there. And then of course when your printer is working, work your printer. That's a nice right. shirt. Oh, Speaking of merch, I want to thank everyone on here. I think uh 
Eric that's in here in the chat, he he bought some uh, some Sith and sticks, which are the uh, swizzle sticks. I saw that I make at our gallery. So thank you, Eric. Austin's in here too. I think he bought some too. The mythosaur, we call it a myth stick. Oh, Nate's in here too, of course. Uh, a myth stick. Um, it is a mythosaur head on a swizzle Myth and easy. So. You should you should make some that are the um that are like death troopers, so you could call them death sticks. I'm just saying. Oh, dang, that's a good idea. You can have, have that idea. Um, I have some skewers we coming out here pretty tough. soon with like three stormtrooper heads stacked up on it for like you know spearing your pineapple and all your fruit and stuff that goes in your drinks. Nice. I got those almost out. So thank you guys. Appreciate it. I gotta refresh the stats on this to see which which of the space daddies are which one of the space daddy shirts are selling the best. It's probably tech, I'm sure. That's, I mean, that, yeah. You may as well wait till Echo's out so you can really get I mean oh, that's, gonna, that too, that's yeah. gonna really throw the results. Yeah. So I, I just looked up Pushbroom Johnny and Johnny Pushbroom, and those both those names are taken. Oh, you did <laughs> what? You're Johnny Pushbroom? Hell oh, yeah! On Instagram, I'm just, checking. Had, I'm just yeah, checking. but then but then it, even if you had it, even if you had it, it'd be like hey, you'd shave yeah. your mustache. And you're like, hey, is that Pushbroom Johnny? I gotta I gotta change my name. I well, then I'll be my mustache. I'll be clean clean shaven Johnny. Yeah, you never know. This garbage is nothing like clone armor. Looks a little tight on you, old man. Yeah, at least I know how to wear it. That's right, everybody. It's time for the weekly workbench. All right, gentlemen, who is working on what? <laughs> Put a one week. in it. Every week. Working on my beer. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I haven't really worked. I've been super busy. I mean, there's this for anyone who's watching. There's this Mando over my shoulder. Oh, I thought that was Crosshair season three. It kind of looks like it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it really actually does. Now you think of it. Um, I had some pieces of a Mandalorian. <laughs> had some armor pieces laying around. I had my jumpsuit for my last. Um, mando that i kept did not sell it with the armor but i had some armor pieces and i painted it and i kind of got this like crosshair inspired vibe he's got the shoulder pad on there and really it's just an excuse for me to use fire puncher in a different costume because fire puncher is so dang cool which is over my other shoulder for people who are watching and why not he could carry fire puncher he found it on the ground crosshair dies in a couple days or a couple wow. weeks and wow. they find fire puncher Spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler alert. We'll Jeez, get to that dude. later. But that's it. I really have not been working on anything. I was making all those like Sith and sticks, but um, again, got a lot of stuff going on around the house. So there's no how many, time. How many DMV requests did you get this week? That's shot. One. <laughs> Only <laughs> one. And that was just a little bit ago. I will post uh, Rami's amazing Photoshop work that he did. <laughs> Got a chuckle with the family. But I still think you need to make. I still think you need to make like a photo frame that you can people can stand behind that looks you like should. a North Carolina You're, driver's license. We're not the just DMV. The photo cut. It. I know, but but, but everybody for one in, second. Everyone that comes in and asks and right there, yeah, has to do. And then you with a Polaroid camera and take the, the picture wall. and then put it up yeah. on the wall. <laughs> you came out with a T-shirt. That has the original barbershop on it. Yes. Why not have a picture of the original DMV on a shirt too? Oh, come on! You can use like, you can use the, the, the Photoshop artwork that I sent you for your for your t-shirt. And, and then you could just sell every every person that comes in. You'd be like, no, we're not the DMV, but you can buy this shirt. <laughs> I do like Ramy's idea. I think that's pretty slick. Yeah, that's not too bad. Been working on that though, so right on. That's it. That's all I got, and that leads us to me. What have I been working on? I finally got uh, the resin printed armor between the last po podcast and now. I got the resin printed armor from uh, the Imperial Factory out in Singapore. Shout out to them. They you mean from Nor NorCal? Well, so, so yeah, so they accidentally shipped it to the wrong address. I guess whatever, something got mixed up, and then 
it was funny though because they're like don't worry it's in california it's close and i was like you don't know how how big the state is you know like to them because they're in singapore he was telling me that the coast from coast to coast it's like 30 miles or something so and he he was like why is shipping so expensive i'm like because it's a six hour drive my man like it's it's not we're not down the street you know like we're we're far far away from each other um so but but they manned up they they paid for everything and they took care of it everything got to me it was in one piece um i i took some photos obviously if you follow us on instagram you saw my stuff there um and uh everything looks really nice the helmet's cool everything everything's great so i was able to take all of that stuff down to uh my mold guy who you all know and love jeff curtis from gec props um he helps me out with some stuff sometimes and he was gracious enough to um agree to mold those pieces so he's working on that stuff now the armor did look sick and it does look sick and it will look sick um i think once we have everyone's stuff slushed out um and, and laid out it's going to be amazing um you're making them out of rubber right so hold up so uh <laughs> so I, I i've been doing a little bit of a little bit of research uh i went out with Ramy to reynolds uh a few weeks ago and i was asking the the person working there like because we usually use Smoothcast 300, which is a 70 durometer, like 70D. Mm-hmm. Like a skateboard uh, wheel. Yeah. So, so, yeah, but it's like, you know, pretty hard yeah. in, in terms of a helmet. Um, so I wanted to see if there was something, if they offered something that was a little more more flexible, it gave a little more give, you know. Um, and they, they were showing me some products that, that, I, that, you know, that are some options. So I might check out. Are they out. more expensive when you start going down that route? The thing I don't know. I, I assume it'll be comparable. It shouldn't be much more. If it is more expensive, it shouldn't be too much more. Um, but I, I was thinking maybe like the knees, the shoulders, like the things that get bumped into the most, maybe, or like if you want to get down on I mean, a knee, take a photo. They with look pretty thing. dynamic in the game, dude. If you want to make it realistic. Well, yeah, but I don't want it to be flimsy either. I want it to be. No, like I want it to be durable. Slide. Yeah, we're not. It's, a, it's yeah, a you also roll. don't want to throw it. You don't want to throw it in a costume bin and have it like just be a blob the next time you go. Over yeah, it. yeah. I want it to still stuff. have rigidity and and still stay in the in the correct shape, right? But um, but but whatever. I'm looking into those options, and that's actually a good point, Ramy, because I'm not sure if that stuff will deform compared to like a. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's not something I considered, so I will have to uh, ask again when I go next time. Um, but otherwise, uh, I've also been checking out so. The files I have for the armor offer these visors that are like basically a mesh, like they're just like perforated with a bunch of little holes. So it's not a visor material; it's like a solid print, but you put it up to your eyes and you can see perfectly out of it. <clears throat> the visibility is like amazing. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking of offering those as a, the visor, either either gloss them black, like whatever. I offer them raw, but I'm thinking people can gloss them black and give them like a black glossy look, or I can print them in a clear resins and maybe tint them Mm -hmm. with a clear coat so they end up being uh pretty transparent as well but maybe tint it like a blue or a black something like that offer a few Um, different versions yeah well i gotta see what's convenient and like you know if someone's like i want this and other people i want that it might be a little i want to make it provide a couple options yeah i want to make it streamlined enough to where it's not you know a hindrance to to making the other stuff um but the, but I like where that's going. I really like the perforated um, visor. I'll show you, Ramy, next time you come over. Because I, I, I actually also ordered a helmet from Daryl from Off Earth. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, so he he's making the same helmet, same files, yeah. but his helmet is 103 scale percent. 103 percent scale. Bigger. So it's slightly bigger. So I, yeah. I just want to compare the two, mine and his. And, yeah. You know, and, and if for whatever reason mine doesn't fit someone, I can point yeah. them in his direction. Um, that's cool. Yeah. So and I, and I bought one from him to support him. I, I'm, yeah. you know, not yeah, just to you know, get the hell diver community. Yeah. A good a good jump. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think that's it for now. Diving into hell. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot, dude. <laughs> it's not a lot. I guess it is a. It's a bit. Yeah. It's a bit. Quite a bit. Um, but yeah, but we're moving, we're getting it going, got the crews ready for, to, you know, the, uh, the visor, the visor that you're talking about with the little perforated holes. Yeah. That's the same, um, method that we used for my son's Spider-Man, uh, His Halloween venom, mask. Right? Wasn't it a yeah. venom? Yeah. 
yeah so the so the like from far away it, it just looks solid looks solid right but then right. when you're like up close to it from behind it you can see through the the holes yeah and then so like in photos it'll look like a solid yeah yeah visor the only right? the only thing that um that i can recommend is because the the venom eyes needed to be white okay okay so so i printed it in in white filament sure but then what happened was like when you would put the helmet on or the mask uh the the light would bounce off the white on the mm-hmm. inside of the mask and, and like blind you mm, okay. so then what we so what i ended up doing was um painting the, the interior inside. yeah painted that black and it was enough to just get rid of the light glare so, so you can see straight out I considered that a little bit because I glossed the outside of the visors black just to uh-huh. test one for myself, but I left the inside matte mm-hmm. for that reason. So it would, so Smart. the light would not bounce um, as bad, uh, but I haven't even tried it yet, but I did put that in mind. Uh, I did have that in mind when I was painting it. it. It's the same thing as like, if you've ever seen those, um, those vinyl window covers mm-hmm. where it's like, like they'll print like, a, a covering for a window for like a business but then like when you go inside the building you, you can, can see, see straight it. out the window right. it's, it's like the same right 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 it's like a tint yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 pretty cool yeah but that's it yeah okay um continuing on with the uh hell divers stuff so i don't i don't know if you've got it anywhere handy john oh, oh i guess it's it's behind right you, right? So, yeah. <laughs> um, I, nothing overly extraordinary, but I sewed the yellow trim onto the uh, the, the top that we're going to be using for the undersuits for the Helldiver stuff. So, you and can it's see perfect. That. It's we we <laughs> bought some something off of Amazon that comes with like a, a jacket and pants that we're just going to build around. And but but they've got these yellow pieces of trim. So, like for like four dollars and change, I get the yellow bias tape at Joanne's and just it's literally one pack sewed it on there, and it covered the whole. It took care of the, the jacket. But then I also got the, I got a couple different kinds of fabric and I put together a cape, like a prototype cape that would be for the hell divers as well. It's on there. I don't know if John can. I, I have it. Yeah. It. Yeah. It's, it's not a really exciting. It, um, but what we found was we've got material that we've located now. That's like got a good texture to it and also has the right kind of drape. I layered it together with another piece of fabric so that there was some extra weight and it would kind of hang the right way. Um, made it a little wider at the bottom so that it flares out and you get like a nice flowing cape behind you. So it looks, it looks the part and it's the right fabric and everything. So we're kind of happy with that. Now that we've got the armor in hand, there's a couple adjustments that we'll make to that. Um, so that, cause there's slots on the armor that, that, that there's tabs on the cape that actually like kind of plug into that. Mm-hmm. So we'll make that work and it'll be the right size. So that, that one will, uh, I can even take that John and alter it so that it's, the right size for those tabs that we talked about. I, so. I, I had like folded them in and squeezed them in and it, and it worked. But if you want, cause, and it kind of looked cool because it bunched up a bit and it, it was like true. kind of like, you know, it looked, it didn't look bad. It looked pretty good, but we okay. can, we can figure that out once we have everything in place. Yeah. We can take a look at that. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And I did, I got, uh, I got the foam. I have the foam. So we're going to try and figure out what that looks like. Cause there's some part par- armor parts on these costumes that have like an under layer to them. Yeah. So we were looking at using EVA foam for that. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, otherwise, so the next thing I just quick update. I am still working on the uh, oh. Omega's energy bow. Not done yet? Yeah. It's not done yet. I'm That's still working on it. These things don't build themselves. But what I'm doing yeah. now, what I'm doing now is I'm I'm cutting up all the pieces. Like I built the model out and I had all the, the details that were there, but now I'm cutting it all up for printing. So like and and I try and set stuff up so that like pieces can be I try and think about the printing process when I'm modeling so Mm. how are you going to fit the pieces together where can I how can you orient it or cut something up so that you don't need to use supports or have like a spot that's going to be a pain in the neck to clean up Mm -hmm. so like if you think about it if I turn off everything here but the barrel so here's here's the barrel right Mm. but how do you orient this for printing 
Like straight up and down, up and down. Sh- sure, straight up and down. Cool. So then you're going to have supports. Yeah, underneath but this I slip mean, here and underneath here and on these the tabs. Other way, be- your seams so are going to be. You do okay, or or you can break it apart and you can have, you know. <laughs> that takes way too long. Uh, right? Yeah, I'm like a one piece. Well, I just take the whole file. <laughs> and I just cut it in a mesh mixer into oh, you however it. many pieces it fits on my so, print bed. So if you print this piece straight up, it will be perfectly yeah. clean with no supports no necessary. Support. Yeah, and then cool. and then you've can there's these two rings that you can print as separate pieces and then add them. Oops, and then add them on. Um, you can print the sights as separate pieces and add those on. And then up at the top, you can add there's like the muzzle that would fit in the middle. And then the shroud that goes over that. And you can print these pieces separately. <laughs> They'll be Brian, perfectly clean. Brian. No supports needed. I tell you what, neither of you guys need to bother printing this then. You're no I won't give you the files. <laughs> I didn't for say everybody it. but you. I, I, pre- I appreciate Brian's it. Really. Do you know no. Omega only used but, it for like 30 seconds? In like <laughs> an episode a while back. You've never seen it again. We might. We might. Ramy knows um, more than you. <laughs> but the uh like in this piece is like what the forearm piece ended up being like five six pieces to um the grip or the body yeah yeah it's awesome good job Same thing so yeah yeah it's awesome <laughs> um but i also i also chop it up so that the pieces that nestle together um there's like tolerances that are that account for most printers so like if you look there's like there's a in the model there's like a tiny little gap here but that tiny little gap happens to be one one perimeter width of a um, printer with a 0.4 nozzle on it so that like you can print these pieces i guarantee you they will fit together with no problems you won't have to like bang them together and they'll they'll be a perfect fit that's nice. awesome so so things like that so again these things you don't model your day them job themselves just do that yeah you should do it's this for a living sell your files you make five dollars a file it's cool yeah exactly Dude, you'll have <laughs> patreon like, you'll have like twenty dollars yeah i'd have twenty dollars <laughs> yeah hold twenty bucks yeah Mm, yeah. so, we can do a Patreon. That's sick, dude. That's, that's it. I'm trying. The only the only things I have left to slice up and and like to clean up the way that I showed you guys is the the two like side arm bow pieces. Um, if I can get that cleaned up and done, I might do like an early release of the files so that um, if you want to print it and just manually move the pieces around, you'd be able to do that. I if I'm gonna continue to model it so that there's some kind of mechanism in there so that they can move to the right spots lock in place and things like that, then that's going to take a little more time. Do you have a, I would, uh, I would print it out of resin. You could, it's actually not that big. And most of the piece, piece other, other than maybe the barrel, um, the parts aren't that big. Um, is you have any, uh, Joker updates, dude, that you can share? Bum, bum, bum. Oh, costume wise. Uh, no, I'm waiting. I'm going to do a, we're going to do a life cast on my face so that I can sculpt out the prosthetics that'll go on the cheeks. You're putting prosthetics on for that. Dude, he has I scars. I've got to do it's the, I got to do the no, big cheek things. Oh, so yeah. So a uh, friend here is going to help me do the life casting thing. I'm going to have to show you. When are that. you doing your life cast? I don't know. It's one of we these. We should weekends. record that. We should yeah, do a live, we'll, live Instagram or something. That's my funny. extra material. I want to do mine. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know for no reason i just want a cast of my head and this is I've for always, comic-con right i'll do live cast Screw i've it. always yeah, this will be for, wanted one this will be for comic-con yeah Joking. yeah it was a bad the, 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 the costume's ready um i've got the hat oh i made uh i guess i made the hat i've got the i've got both the normal hat and the beret hang on i'll go get it all right <laughs> awesome that's gonna be cool and you got the jacket steven I I did. So Ramey actually uh Sick. he procured awesome. he procured my um one of my props that I need for the character that I'm doing. Oh. And then oh. I, and then when totally. he did that, I was like, all right, I'll now that I'm committed, like I'll go get the 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 goon, the Joker goon jacket. That a hole canceled my order. Remember like I I I won an eBay auction. I paid and then he canceled it and refunded it like within hours. Oh, that's I found nice. I found another one Wait. on Facebook Marketplace for like 150. But okay. How's shipping? Know. Cool hat. Shipping shipping was gonna kill me. It's local. We're just gonna oh, that's cool. But the, that Ooh. one, dude. That's so this is one. this is the one for like the version of the costume that, that. I'm specific, which is the yeah. beret. 
chef like, probably like a chef's hat or the bray or whatever but that's insane yeah. it looks well, good hope, hopefully you can find a batman if with only I knew somebody with a Batman suit. Only we knew someone with Batman. Hmm. Better be an '89 Batman. Yeah, Michael Keaton Batman. Right. <laughs> I, I, it's I, gotta I, be, dude. The Michael Keaton, Batman. the '89 Batman wearing the the Jordans. The Jordans, yeah. If you're not, if that, if the Batman does not have the Jordans on, then I don't want to hear about <laughs> it. I don't want to hear about that guy. Mike West. No, no nips. No nips Fights. on this one. <laughs> If somebody said that in the chat. Same time yeah. you said it out loud. No Fights nipples. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, are you done? Can I go? I'm, oh yeah. Uh. So I worked on. Um, crap. What did I work on? I was going to talk about it earlier. Now I'm forgetting. Mm. Um. <laughs> your room. Your collection room. Well, I did do some stuff uh, in the collection room. So. If anybody has um, a collection that they display, typically, like the go-to thing used to be the IKEA Expedit, or no, what was it called, Ramy? The D glass D cases. Detolf. 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 That's what was, I have. <laughs> it was the IKEA Detolfs, right? Or, or you could use the IKEA Billy bookcases, yep. like Brian has behind him. Um, but because my collection is now including more statues, especially the quarter scale statues, those are a lot larger, uh, not only in height, but in depth, you need something a lot more substantial to, to hold those. So I was doing this, I was doing research about a year ago and I found these um, cases on, uh, I think it was like on a sideshow collector's website, hot toys collector's website. They're called Maju case. And, the entire frame is built out of like um, 2020 aluminum extrusion and everything is like all the panels on it are held by magnets. It's it's like, it's really, really like high tech looks modern work of art, um, reasonably priced, you know, it, it is more expensive than Ikea stuff, but for, for what you're getting, it's reasonably, reasonably priced. The only reason I never pulled the trigger a year ago is because the wait list on the company was like nine months and they're shipped from like Singapore. So if you ever need extra pieces or whatever, <laughs> we know what that's like. <laughs> yeah. So Been what there. I ended up doing was, um, and this is a good tip for anybody that is looking to, um, you know, curate or display their collection. Ikea. I went to Ikea. And I did Ikea PAX. So Ikea PAX, P-A-X, is their closet wardrobe system. And you just buy the actual, It's all it is is the frame. And then you can like uh, put whatever you want on, on the inside. So I just did shelves, right? Um, for, the, for the taller shelves, I did glass so that you can like see through it and the light can come down. And then for anything that was like midway or below, I did wood shelves. And then to keep everything dust free, um, because it's a closet system, they sell like sliding closet doors that go on this unit. But what I did was I didn't purchase the panels that go in the doors. So I just bought the frame for the sliding door. And then I'm putting plexiglass inside those sliding doors. So it's literally like, think of like a closet, right? But with glass or plexiglass sliding doors, and then all your stuff is just like lit up from the inside. I thought you are going to put an air purifier in there. I thought I was going to put like, a, yeah, like an air filter to get all the dust out or something. Dust system. He's like, no, I mean, I, yeah. I would, but you thought about you, it. Um, you would. Definitely would. So, yeah. So uh, that's on its way. The plexiglass doors are on their way. Uh, but it's gonna look really slick, so I'll, I'll post some some photos of that when it's done. Um, I, I printed something, but I can't remember what I printed. I'll have to talk about it next week, I guess. But yeah, that's it. Um, hey, Ramy. Hey, Steven. Boop, boop. We're being hailed. This encryption's new. 
This might take a while. Take a while. Okay. Um. So we mentioned, I think it was last week, we talked about the uh, the Star Wars Unlimited card game and uh, the the trading card game from Fantasy Flight Games. So that we're getting Bad Batch in July. Well, now we've got a sneak peek at a Crosshair card. I can actually show. Ooh. That's that is cool. not me. Crotch shot. For the record. That is not my pose. What's with that crotch shot? They didn't steal your pose? So um, so we've got a sneak peek at the crosshair card. I assume over the next few weeks we'll continue to get character reviews what for that. What a pose. Even the chat agrees. <laughs> <laughs> what a pose. He's leaning, dude. He's leaning on something. That's not crosshair. That's crotch hair. That's crazy. Hey. <laughs> wow. And oh, here we go. No. No. Okay, we also have a name no, no, for no, the no. series. So we we and this kind of falls okay, under a question I, I, I was asking Stephen. I was trying to figure out like, well, how will we know like which cards we want to get? Like, what packs do we want to get if we want to try and get these cards? So oh. we've got we've got a, a series reveal called Shadows of the Galaxy. So that'll be the series that we'll get. Oh. So the like Stephen has like Spark of the Rebellion was the series that was there before. Ooh, Shadows so, of the Galaxy. So Shadows. now we have I like how it just says following orders. Just, just doing his thing. Yep, that's doing just that's just crosshair doing being crosshair. So shooting a cannon. So when Oops. is that? When um, is so released? that in July is all I know. I don't have a specific okay. date. We were we were speculating that they would oh. drop during Comic Con. Were yeah, were we were we? So side note, were we gonna take our Bad Batch costumes to Comic Con for a day? Are we doing? Yeah, that? this is the only time we're gonna be together again, right? I mean, Look, season look, season, season two, one? season one. one? Oh, no, I'm gonna bring watch. season. I'm gonna bring season two just because it's Brian is season one and season three, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, what are you bringing, uh, Stephen? I'm sorry. Season two. So well, we gotta. We gotta. It's, yeah, we you guys to, can do whichever because I should mean, probably coordinate this maybe a little bit. We should probably I, coordinate just a bit. I really, I really like the season. I like, season season I like wearing season two. I like wearing season two. Brian, would you be opposed to bringing uh, Imperial Crosshair? Yes. Yes. You're opposed to it. F that guy. But if you, you know what, season- I I will I'll do my season three. How's that? There's that too. You gonna black it out? Yeah. Did I just spoil it? Sorry. No. Okay. Well, we're gonna talk about it. Yeah. Sorry. yeah. I'm well, pretty sure everyone's here. Is anyone? Is anyone in the chat not? Either I'll either black it out today? or I'll or I'll weather it up. Should, so that's another question. Should we commit to a repaint? Or or are we just no? Just leave. I, I want to have. Yeah. I want to see more. Because we more did season one. See what they do. We've done season two. We have time. We're, so you want to wait? Okay, we'll wait. Yeah. We'll wait. We'll no wait. committing. I, I do want to hit up. Um, I know that we're already scheduled to make an appearance uh, in costume somewhere, but I do want to head over to this. Uh, what is it? F- Fantasy flight. Fantasy sure. flight. It'll be. They'll be in. The that would Lucas be dope. Pool. Brilliant. they'll be I, right I, there around the corner from the other thing i because the promo the promos that they've been releasing for this new set the first promo was hunter the second promo is now crosshair um crotch hair i i i really want to like i don't know i just feel like they're gonna have some sort of like bad batch mural or something and we gotta get a photo with it because it's gonna be the we'll, end of that so yeah it'll be yeah. yes yes i agree I, yeah and jo- and joe should do a season three force ghost blue sheer uh tech no he has to dress up like cx oh that would be so <laughs> sick that would be so sick oh joe where are you listen when you listen to this yeah, Joe, build an entirely new costume. You have, you have, July. The, yeah, Galactic Armory has the files for it already, so. You don't even have to paint it. Just print it in black just, filament and you're yeah, done. Just go, for what? Yeah. I missed that. For CX2, CX1, CX2. Oh, he said, he's already said absolutely no. He's not doing that. He's not. No. Joe CX2. Joe can show up in a uh, green morph suit and glasses. Yeah, yeah there you go. That works. It's CGI. Okay. Yeah. Moving moving on in the news so uh so tony gilroy received the writers guild america east's ian mcclellan hunter award for career achievement so the award's usually given to um 
a member in honor of their work, body of work as a writer in motion pictures or television. While he was there, he uh, was interviewed, and he had this to say about the work on uh, that he's done on Andor, describing it as the most important project he's ever done. So he says, I've been on Andor for five years now. We're finishing the second half. I've had a lot of fun over the years, but I don't know whether I've ever done anything as important as these 24 hours of storytelling that we're doing now. So um, we know that he's been super passionate about the project, and uh, it sounds, I just made a comment that they're finishing the second half right now. So I think we'll uh, hopefully be seeing that here at some point in the near future. We'll see. All right. I mean, I think, I think anything that you devote, uh, what is it? What do you say? Five years? Five years. Five, five years. Half that's, a decade. That's like, if you, if you look at your life, your adult life, <laughs> that's, it's a fair percentage of it. Five it's years. Junk. Yeah. 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 You look at Lord of the Rings. Like those guys were filming for like what over ten, 10 years. years. Yeah, <laughs> imagine that. It's crazy. Okay, so um, in we saw that in the Tales of the Empire, we know that at least one kind of major arc within that show, that six episode show, is going to feature the Inquisitors and focus around them, and and specifically Barris, but um. In, I think that they're doing this on purpose. So we've got an announcement from Lucasfilm about a comic miniseries coming in July that focuses on the Inquisitors. Um, literally called. Hold on. For the record. Literally called Star Wars Saint Inquisitors. That's weird because in the Vader comics that came out in 2017 and then a little after that, they had the Inquisitors in there as well. And they even had little backstories and like how all of them were missing like limbs and stuff because Vader would like. Test on. <laughs> teach them Practice. yeah like 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 train with them yeah but that's weird that's, that's seven sister though just well, saying good old disney just retconning their own stuff now yeah yeah so but again um, this makes sense considering how much of a focus we've seen on them in the trailer for tales of the empire which again drops on may 4th all six episodes so uh titled star wars inquisitors the comic will follow the inquisitorious as they hunt Tensu Run, a new character described as a survivor of Order 66 who has drawn the attention of Darth Vader, the Inquisitor's master. Tensu is trying to build, rebuild the Jedi Order and spreading messages of hope. So Vader wants him dead as soon as possible. Of course. So, story written by Rodney Barnes, artwork by Raymond Ros Rosanis. Barnes shared his excitement for the series. He said, it's such an honor to be writing the very first Inquisitor's solo story. Barnes tells Star Wars.com, I love this time period of Star Wars lore because it's the one I grew up on when Darth Vader and the Empire were imposing their will on the galaxy. Plus, I got to create an all new legendary Jedi with Tensu Run. Truly the best of times. And we get um we're getting two alternate covers for that as well. So there's the uh the main cover was the one I showed a second ago. And then we've got uh two basically featuring the uh the Grand Inquisitor. He looks more uh anime manga yeah. uh he looks it's cool seeing these guys in less of the rebels look and more of the modern animated viewpoint i think they've done a decent job blending the art aesthetics yeah. together it, yeah. it to the point where it doesn't make one feel different than the other like i can look if at you, rebels and my brain doesn't have to reboot compared to if seeing they stuff in Clone put Wars. seventh sister in this new series that'd be freaking awesome well she's she's on the artwork Just for the cover fun little for the people that know if you know you know what yeah did, with um i can't remember but was maroc in the trailer he yeah. was yes okay so they're gonna and explain they're gonna explain yep yep cool okay because that was Moving. a little confusing for me in in ahsoka i was just like this random inquisitor and then he just poofs we, and we never got explanation from him. We him. get a little more. I mean, it'll be interesting to see just how much more because it's, it's clear that that arc doesn't focus specifically on him. It's more about Barris. Yeah. He's just featured. We see him in some of the, the trailer. So we'll see if we actually get any content that explains anything or if it just says, Hey, he exists. So, I mean, I guess we didn't really get a backstory for the inquisitors either during rebels. They just kind of, Oh, we're inquisitors. Here's another one. <laughs> yeah. And another. Yeah, there's always Here's number more. five. Here's number three. Here's number seven. Here's number eight. Yeah. Eighth brother, ninth sister, seventh sister. 
Second sister. Fifth brother. Is there uh, like is there like duplicates of the no. number but with brother and sister? I don't think like, so. Like can you have a fifth sister and a fifth brother? The, uh, we haven't seen any yet. They haven't repeated any yet. Okay. Fair it, question. At least in the canon comics, like the Vader comics and, and in the shows and everything so far in canon, no. In these new comics, I can't say because we haven't read them yet. But no, nothing nothing uh, is duplicate. They're did all any of you guys, did any of you guys read the Bad Batch comic? The new one that came out? Nope. Yeah, I was bummed about that. We I I was I meant to pick one up at uh, was that WonderCon? Was it one issue or what? What? I think so. Yeah. Okay, so it was like a special, like a one off. Echo's not in it, so I didn't read it. <laughs> <laughs> Echo's not really in the show anymore. Do you still watch? Uh, yeah, he's, yeah. <laughs> he's still uh, watching. Uh, he was in the, He was in there today. We'll get to that. Burn. So. Okay. Um. Moving on. So I, we don't always cover like there's Ooh. a lot of books that come out and stuff, but there's there's a new book coming. I, I, this The premise behind this one caught my attention, so I thought I'd, we'd get into this one. So this one's called The Rise and Fall of the Galactic Empire. And it's framed, it's it's written by historian and Star Wars fan, Dr. Chris Kempshaw. Um, and he looks at Palpatine's empire from, from a historical perspective. So it's going to be released on July 4th. And then as of right now, Kempshaw actually released on his Twitter account, um, and I think you can see it on Amazon as well. There's there's a chapter that's already available to look at. And this chapter is actually his historical analysis of the Clone Wars and how it was engineered to manipulate the galaxy into being battered and worn and ready for a safe and secure society and how Palpatine achieved his goal of, of driving the wedge between the galaxy from the Jedi so that the Sith could finally have you know the revenge that they were looking for. So the the... The interesting nuance is he writes this from the it's it's an in-universe historical document written by resistant a resistance soldier, Beaumont Kim Kin, sorry, who for anybody that like paid attention to those characters, it's actually uh Dominic uh, Monaghan's character uh from the from the sequels. So he's framed up as the author of the book. So it in the uh what? Yeah, in one of the books that they did, you know, the um, like the visual dictionaries or whatever, his character was described as a historian. Oh. So now he is the book is written as if it's from his historical perspective. So like he's wow. the universe historian that wrote the book and it's all written as if it's like a factual historical telling in his, universe from his perspective. Yeah. Yeah, and it says the details have been retrieved from within the archives of both the Empire and the record of the First Order. When combined with new material being uncovered on Exegol, it helps tell a different story about the Clone Wars. And so it get, gets all into all these. So I thought that was interesting. I like that. Well, that explains how his character knew that it was uh, dark magic. Secrets only the Sith knew. Right. <laughs> right. I was interested. Uh, I, I, my interest was piqued. Uh, when this book was announced, because Chris uh, Kempshaw, um, his previous writings are the rise and fall of like uh, other empires, uh, but in nonfiction history. So yeah. the fact that he's actually doing this um, uh, for Star Wars, that's that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I guess he's I guess he's not only a, a historian, but also like an actual Star Wars fan. So. This was like a perfect blending of his day, his day job and his hobby. So, so uh, this next article came to uh, listener of the show, Eric Fisher. So thank you for this. Uh, so according to website Disneyland News Today, uh, Anaheim City Council just unanimously approved a project proposal put forward by Disney called Disneyland Forward. So um, they voted for it on uh, the other day. I guess they vote for it again on May 7th. I'm not sure why there's two votes, but... The way that I understand this, the Disneyland pr forward proposal. So on paper, Disney's committed to spending two and a half billion dollars on an expansion of the D Disneyland resort. Um, 1.9 billion of that is spent within the first 10 years. Um, there's some money in there that goes towards affordable housing in the area, um, sewer improvements on Catella, um, the Anaheim park system as well. 
um, once it gets its final approval, it's going to allow, and this is where it gets interesting. And I, I wish I had more time to kind of dig into this because everybody's going to understand this to be like an expansion of the park. But the reality is what this does is it gives Disney the ability to, they've got more control over how they develop the land within their existing borders. It, this is not necessarily, it might turn into an increase in the footprint of the park, but it's not necessarily more land for Disney. Disney already owns land there, but they still have to get approval from Anaheim for everything that they do. This basically says, Hey, if it's within the borders of your, what you already own, you've got additional control now to decide what you're going to do with that. And I think that's an important distinction because it'll help streamline things. They don't have to go through all the same approvals that they would have otherwise, which I guess big corporation, you could probably look at that and say like, ah, oh, that could kind of get dangerous. But um, once it gets its final approval, the, it lets them choose where it will build new lands, resorts, hotels, and more within its already existing footprint. So one such thing that they've talked about already is a new avatar experience. So, um, and they had earlier in a, earnings call they had released uh, concept art for what that would look like i've seen the avatar thing in florida this one looks nothing like that one so this is kind of cool it'll be different other content that they've been talking about doing within the park and, and adding to what's already there is um uh, stuff the, the bringing the tron ride from florida here uh, a new new rides around tangled peter pan black panther coco frozen toy story and even zootopia so um, and the the estimates on how much revenue this could bring to An the city of Anaheim is pretty wide range here, depending on what they do. Could be as low as fifteen million and as much as two hundred forty four million dollars a year. So I don't know that that big of a range makes me think that they don't actually know how much it's going to add. <laughs> it's a wide range, so we'll see. Um, so don't forget that you can send articles in to have us talk about them on the show by emailing your finds to news at the dadbatch.com. Do you know who, who didn't forget that you could do that chat moderator extraordinaire Steph? Cause she sent this last mm -hmm. one into that email address. So mm -hmm. let's get into it. So um, deadline sound and screen television is hosting a live concert on the evening of Wednesday, May 8th at UCLA's Royce hall, celebrating a composer showcase of original music for television. So the live event will include a full 60 piece orchestra performing original tracks from the shows featured, and we'll include discussions with the composers and songwriters. So the shows being featured include, um, based on a true story, Fargo, Lessons in Chemistry, Masters of Air, Monarch, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Only Murders in the Building, Shogun, Silo, and last but not least, and the reason we're even talking about it, is Ahsoka, featuring parts of the score composed by our favorite Star Wars sound guy, Kevin Kiner. So and I, it, they were, there was a, a part of the post showed his headshot, and it was alluding that like he would be there for the Q&A portion. So um, if you're interested in attending, there actually is a link. Steph will drop that in the, uh, in the chat. I already did, actually. Um, we can share it on, the, on our channel as well. But uh, you can actually uh, fill out the RSVP. It doesn't guarantee you a spot, but you can submit, and uh, it's first come, first serve, and maybe you get a chance to go see the show. So thanks again for Steph for sending that in. And don't forget, if you've got news that you'd like to have us talk about on the show, email it to us at news at thedadbatch.com. That is it for the news. We've done these a thousand times, boys. You know what to do. When have we ever followed orders? All right, full spoilers ahead. This week's episode review is for The Bad Batch, Season 3, Episode 13, Into the Breach, with an original Disney Plus air date, April 17th, 2024. This episode was directed by Saul Ruiz, written by Brad Rao, story editor Matt Mcnovitz, music by Kevin, Sean, and Deanna Kiner. With a Disney Plus description, The Batch prepare for a gambit in enemy territory uh i know that the four of us five of us have been waiting for this episode for quite some time <laughs> uh, but i want to get uh first impressions from everybody um what you thought of the episode and then we'll uh do a breakdown uh, immediately after um i 
think John, you just watched it, right? Yeah, I watched just it watched it again, and I wa- had it on earlier. Yeah, All right, um, dude. let's hear it. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. Great episode. Um, we sort of we've been waiting, like you said, we've been waiting for this episode because because hmm, maybe we haven't been waiting, but it was cool to see that they had. Um, oh, well, I, it's cool, but it's a bit lackluster the way they um, changed the colors of their kits. And I was hoping we'd get some paint, like maybe like white to maybe look more like the TKs or whatever, like, or like the uh, RCs. But all oh, they did was yeah, like that would have made sense. The, yeah, we, you know what I'm saying? Like that. They that's painted, what, yeah, that's the angle I thought they were going to approach. Like, oh, maybe if we do white, and then we kind of blend in a little bit with that whole thing. But backpacks and all that, whatever. Um, but we got like stripped paint, which is cool, but it's just like a. It's not what I wanted. But it's fine. It's great. Um, they're just like blacked out, like murdered out in their new in their, you know, kits. And uh otherwise, yeah, the episode was cool. I I I wanted to see the, some color, some changes in the armor, but um, it was cool, yeah. I'll let you guys talk about it. Muted McGee. Muted Mutenheimer. <laughs> I do that. So I mute because Steven's always saying, I can hear you typing. So <laughs> I uh, I think we suspected that there was going to be a wardrobe change at some point. And, and so it had to be coming at some point. Knowing that there was going to be some kind of like covert operation, it made sense that this might be a good opportunity to do it. I, I'm with John. I kind of was hoping for something a little more substantial than then just throwing some black paint, or I guess taking off the paint that they had already had. Um, so I don't know, like it was like they had like laser tattoo removal for their paint jobs. Um, Echo's Echo's got the moves. He was like that moment, like when he was up on top of that thing and like the way he like rolled off. Yeah. Dr. around. Like I was like, dang, he's he's been through some stuff, but he's still uh, pretty spry. Dude, he was nimble. Yeah. He was a spry. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Don't nobody ask. Um, but no, he was he was good. The uh it was good. They brought. It, I thought it was funny. Like we've joked that he's been sort of the C three PO to, or he's been sort of like the R two D two of the show when Tech was the C three PO, and 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 then they had him basically entering smuggling on the ship through the same way that the R two droids do, driving it home even more. But uh, yeah, so echoes the droid. He is. Oh, he's so. cyborg, cybernetic <laughs> being. <laughs> That's me. Brian. Do you- I I was super jazzed on this episode. Um uh the whole Omega stuff. Omega is like Omega's getting spicy. Her her whole thing with the kids. She's like, I got out of here before. We're getting out of here again. <laughs> she's like all cocky, like, I'm gonna yeah. break this out of here. And Watch like, like, all- like Rocket from like, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you definitely got a little bit of that uh uh humanizing emery more too you know um when she had the little girl had the trash lula <laughs> um <laughs> but um i i mean but uh it's rampart right rampart was just complaining and they were just like shut up oh, you're doing what we say <laughs> like he was just so like he, he was just complaining about everything, but it was it was funny when he put the suit. He's like, I'm not a lieutenant. I'm a whatever he was. And then I was Vice Admiral. Vice yeah, Admiral. Oh, you've yeah. been demoted. <laughs> and he starts bossing everyone around and he's all, I missed this. <laughs> he's like power hungry tool bag. Um, but uh, uh man, when when Echo rolled out, it was like Oh, here we go. And then uh yeah, the 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 outfit thing, I kind of expected it to maybe when they were like, Oh, we're we're gonna need to go undercover. I was like, Oh, are they gonna put uh RC uni- uniforms on? Are they gonna, you know, paint their armor white? And uh it was just like yeah, they just like stripped off. It's like <laughs> paint dinner. Exactly like Imperial Crosshair, <laughs> just blacked out. <laughs> His fins black. I was like, oh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, he looked cool. 
I thought he looked cool. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if uh, there's three left. Um, I, you know, no one wants to talk about it, but uh, two, two left, two left, two, yeah. two episodes left, fourteen, fifteen, right, fourteen, fifteen. Um, uh, I mean, we're going down. Like this it's... is we're we're headed into the fire wearing all black. Um, unless there's some kind of stop off point. I mean, when they sucked up onto that ship at the last second, and that was so like, oh, on the edge of the seat, you know, like what, what, what? they got on, pew, took off, they're in it. So the next two episodes should be, you know, they should be going like nonstop for the next two episodes. So the yeah. end is near boys. The end did you guys, near. did you guys notice there was a, a clone? I don't know. If, I, actually, I don't know if he was a clone or not, but there's a clone a, of John. Well, did you see him? <laughs> yeah, it's did a clone of him? John. Yeah, okay. Because I don't know if it's a clone or not, but it's definitely someone with a mustache hmm. and short hair. It might just uh, be the oh, emoji in oh, the beginning. The, one, the first, the one I, that he, yeah, that check he went chat. He, yeah, he checked yeah, him. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So you doing it, John? It, no, I just, <laughs> I just thought it was funny that yeah, he's right there. Oh, yeah, that yeah. guy. I was yeah, thinking of the other like. I was thinking the other officer that got a. No. Uh, this dude, yeah, it actually looks more like David Neff, actually. <laughs> oh it does look man, like David. It does well, problem solved? Yeah. Sorry, uh, David. No more oh, man, Oma- for you. Omega's just becoming a boss, man. She's just getting, she's so on herself and knowing what she wants to do and confident. And it's, uh, it's super cool. So, oh. um, I, this episode, it was just like, it felt like it shouldn't have been an episode to me. Like, I mean, I get it that, you know, they've, they've got to like move the story forward and they've got to like, you know, show us it's always better in, in a visual medium to show us, right. Like how they get from point A to point B to point C, et cetera. But I'm like, come on, man. Like we already know everyone's going to Tantus. Like, just, just give it to us already. Like. (laughs) So I don't know. I'm just foaming at the mouth right now for for more. And then, you know, every time they just cut the episode where they cut it, I'm like, come on. It's increasingly I mean, that, frustrating. That's what they're supposed to do. I mean, that's how you get excitement and anticipation. No. And we live in a world of instant coffee, and this is not instant coffee. And this is the end. So <laughs> I really enjoy, I don't know why, but Every time that we see Tantus on the screen, uh, it, it feel good. It kind of does, yeah. <laughs> it like it's I don't know. It, it's it's like I know like everything that goes on at Tantus is like <laughs> the worst thing that you can do possibly to to a human being. Um, maybe it, maybe it's a new Pabu. <laughs> it yeah, kind of looks I, like Pabu. I don't know, but that would be cool because nobody knows the location of it. Other than uh, what's his name, right? Calling it now. Hmm. So Brand I've got Park? a question. No. I've, got, uh, I've got a question for for the screenshot that's there right now. So I I don't know that I ever noticed this before, but like the mountain behind the one in the foreground also has the two levels that look mm-hmm. like they're occupied. So did we know that before? And I just am the one that's now catching up. Or like, is the Tantus complex like does it comprise multiple mountains, or is it really? Are we only seeing stuff going on inside the one in the foreground? Good question. I mean, from what I've understood, all the clones are here. Okay. So, like, all the clones, I should say, all the clones that are not still in service are here. So, this would have to be as big, if not bigger, than Camino. Mm. Um, the Camino facility, I should say. Right. Okay. So, maybe there's more than two. Maybe there's three or, I don't know. 
We can go yeah, back. Well, we, we we know that like the the facility on Camino was multiple platforms spread yeah. around. Like maybe these mountains kind of represent the new version of that same right. construct. Um. Okay, so we open up the show. We're back on Tantus. We see Omega's back in her cell. She's just commiserating with with her cellmates here. Um, here we got the uh, what was it? Trash, trash, uh, trash Lula. Trash Lula. Yeah. <laughs> and this is where she kind of drops the the bombshell on her cellmates that uh, she's escaped before. And these guys are like, "What?" <laughs> They didn't um, know they I, had a badass in their in their and, midst. And I, I, I love how the three of them um they're just kind of like surprised. And yet uh I think the baby's name is Baron. Baron. Uh the baby doesn't care about anything. The baby's a baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, she, she, doesn't uh, react. He, the baby's just like loving its its toy or whatever. Yeah. Um and then this next shot, when we see um, the rendezvous of Echo with the batch, Raimi, correct me if I'm wrong. Is this concept art of Cloud City? Hmm. Is this reminiscent of concept art for Cloud City? Ralph McQuarrie. I was it sure. Like it. Yeah. It, it sure looks like it might be. I don't. I don't remember. Now we we have we have seen this place before. This is where Cad Bane. In season one, rendezvoused with um, um, Fennec Shand. Yeah, we see them visiting a lot of previous locations, like kind of fringy locations this season. Right. Like they're go; those are their old hideouts now. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, I was just man. I, I saw this and I was like, "Whoa, Cloud City!" Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, Bor- Steph says it's Bora Vio. Bora Vio. Steph and Emily. Um, we get the return of Echo. Finally, he's back. Oh, coming in like he's a boss too. Stolen an Imperial shuttle. <laughs> Echo committing the GTA. <laughs> he's like, this is the the best I could do. Oh, Sorry. dude, they they did the they did the uh the uh predator handshake too. They did. Yeah. Yeah. With Echo's left hand because he's With got Echo's, no right. Yeah. Hand. I mean, of course. Yeah. Hunter's not grabbing I, the. I still think it would be funny if they did it with the right hand. Since got this with the stomp? Yeah. <laughs> he just grabs it. That's what I do when, I, when I'm when i in Echo and like like there's kids around. Yeah. I try and high five them yeah. with the stomp. Yeah. Because they don't know what to do. It's so funny. <laughs> Is they, like instead of fist bumping, they're just like. Yeah. ET yeah. Like, like, yep. Boom. <laughs> 100%. Um, okay. So Echo is kind of giving them the lowdown on here. Um, with Rampart saying that the only way to get the coordinates back to Tantus is to visit the uh, space station that's docked uh, at Coruscant. It's an Imperial space station that gives the codes to the shuttle going to Tantus directly into the Navi computer so that no human being ever <laughs> gets these codes. Um, right. I mean, talk about secure, right? That's Very secure. Uh, yeah um and the only way they can infiltrate this space station successfully is to give rampart um a disguise where he looks like uh a captain a, a, a captain um or an imperial officer rather and he's going to disguise the batch as his what was it his personal security detail um his man i got so excited excited like yes we are gonna like you were saying john here it comes like are they gonna paint i I, my hope was that they would paint themselves white with yellow and red and orange like to to like pay homage to to rebels oh like imagine the whole batch but with like a tech paint job and then instead of having like the batch skull we've all got like the tech skulls going on like that, that would have been a cool tribute right that would have been that's what cool. i wanted that's what i, I like wanted time to do that i mean they just <laughs> yeah 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 they didn't have time but white would have made sense right they're trying like... to go undercover like well they're not hiding in the shadows like they don't need yeah. to be like 
Imperial. I don't know. This episode was pretty doggone dark. It was hard enough to catch them. Yeah. yeah. And with yeah. enough lighting to see what they'd even done to their suits. I, to um, me, I think we, in our minds, had an idea of a moment bigger than. Yeah. <laughs> we made up a whole movie in our heads and it wasn't. <laughs> we didn't write the show. Yeah. We catch up with uh, Omega and she's being. Um, she's having her, her blood drawn by Emer- Dr. Emery Carr. Um. And it's at this point when Emery Carr inserts the blood that she's taking into some sort of a droid chamber that's in the wall. And Omega quickly realizes that the walls are now not solid, that there's actually panels or something behind there. Um, so she looks at Dr. Carr's, um, I guess it's like the little, uh, um, Tool tray, like a tray, right? Yeah, and uh, a phlebotomist's tray, if you would. <laughs> right. And Jeez. and she steals, she steals one of the tools. Now, do you guys think that Doctor Emery Carr left the tray there on purpose, or is it is it going to be like one of those things where she's like she notices that the thing's missing later on, or? I was going to say she's super meticulous. Like she's either she either did plant it there. So Omega would reach over and grab it or she's going to know later like oh, there's a tool missing because she's she's like that. Right. Yeah, I would assume at least um, I love this shot of of Omega using the toy blocks to um, to map out map out the uh, the, the base. I mean, that's genius, right? She's she's been watching this whole time. She's observing, taking everything in. And one of the things that I noticed too was that the puzzle piece that she has there on the right side, kind of like a, I guess it would it would be like a, a circular version of Jenga. Mm-hmm. Um, it almost it almost like looks like the base itself, like the way it has the layers and everything. I thought that was interesting. Um, but yeah, she's, she's totally doing like the classic car chase movie heist movie here, uh, where she's like telling everybody, you know, like, okay, here's where we're at. We got to come around here and do this. I thought that was cool. We catch up with the batch and, um, Mm. here's the part where echo decides to. What do you guys, Remy? I I I know what John thinks. <laughs> Remy, what do you think of this? What do I think about what? The black armor. Eh, I'm a little underwhelmed. <laughs> yeah. I I I think like everybody. I I was hoping that we would get more of a noteworthy change, and I'm not convinced that this is the last look that they'll have this season. It got the like, job I, done. I mentioned in the in our group chat earlier, like oh, and like look right there, you can see around the edge of Echo's shoulder, you can still see the white and the orange. Yeah, that would have been there. Yeah, before. I, I think all the edges of their armor yeah. have the color left, but everything yeah. else is blacked out. Um, we saw in what? How many times did they repaint poor Chopper like from his normal colors to like it was like a disguise yeah. for them in Rebels to repaint stuff? So maybe this isn't the final look. Maybe they'll have some other look before the end of the show or so their under their undersuits were all still the same. Cause like you can still see all the red peeking out around and his white shirt and like all the hunters, like the green and his Brown jumpsuit and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, or they Wrecker, all die. Wrecker's Wearing yellow. Black. Straight into the abyss. You really want everybody to die, Brian. I mean, it's just a reality. Like as soon it's as everyone, happen. you know, like accepts it just like tech being dead. Just accept it. They're all going to die. At this point in the timeline, you know, Luke, Luke was born, but he's not, we know he's not like, we don't, nobody's, he's not in this, but we don't think he's dead. Like, why does, why? Because they, we don't see them in some other installment of something we haven't watched yet that, or that Lucasfilm hasn't put out yet that, that we think that they're dead. Why do they have to be dead? Because they're just too big of important figures in the whole 
Are Clone they? Wars Why? saga. Why? Because we think they're cool and important because we like the characters. They're not. They're nobody. I mean, they're obviously to, linking like, Omega with the Emperor's return in the sequels. I mean, but that's the thing. Like all this content, like Calcets, Calcets, this is a big deal for the people that played that game. But the people that never played the game don't even know who he is. If I had money, that's I'd be taking bets. That's how it is, for sure. It's a Rogue One ending. Yes, Lacey, you are correct. Yep, <laughs> it should be. Because listen, the end of Rogue One, nobody's mad at it. Nobody. It it had to be done. It was like it had a to be done. sacrifice. It was it was uh, it was yeah. beautiful. And they, they accomplished the mission too. They, they did what they had the to mission. do. Jin paid homage to her dad, made her dad proud. Got a hug from Cassian. Puppy. Then they went then they went to sleep. They went Betty bye. Yeah, Ryan's right. They are too dangerous to be left alive. Exactly. Uh we get back to Omega. She pops open the wall. She finds out that there's a a, a scaffolding or uh i guess it almost looked like a, an elevator shaft like with cables and stuff yeah. running through that she's gonna clearly easily escape uh and then i thought about it like man if she escapes and she takes the the jedi kids or the force kids with with her oh yeah at the same time that the batch arrive and like you know the batch arrives and and uh uh Echo, you know, he links up in the system and the computer and he's like, oh, okay, I got their location. I know exactly where they're at. And then they get there and like <laughs> the jail's empty. Oh, man, come on. Like, it was that's slick. Gonna suck. that would be what would happen, though, right? Yeah, you would think. That's um, what, yeah. Yeah, because she's not going to sit still, right? She's she's she's. No, yeah. she's they don't expect her to move. wait there, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we get Echo uh, trying to infiltrate the um, the Imperial shuttle that is going to be receiving the codes. Uh, Our two units on point or Tantus. Um, I'm man. I really wish we had subtitles for for R two for astromech droids because I want to know what that astromech said to to Echo when he when they bumped into each other. Um, almost like you know when Chopper has his subtitles that just get bleeped out. <laughs> uh, and then we see Echo. He makes it up the uh, the droid tube up into the ship. Um, of course the the uh, clone commando is none the wiser. They never are. They never are for some reason. And the boys are back on the first Imperial shuttle, ready to attach. Uh, of course, Echo gets the, the proximity sensors down in time, and the boys latch on to the ship. And that is it. They are on their way to Tantus. War. Into the breach. I think the next question is, do we all die one by one or as a group as a group it's got to be or yeah one by one in a, an epic chain of events that leads like to rogue, like, the last like rogue group. one yeah like rogue one <sighs> the interesting i still, thought, I, I still want together i still want yeah. record to be holding up a, a door like with this just brute strength and then and it smashed crushes and him. then and then just gets smashed when omega tries to use the force uh, <laughs> jesus well then i mean dude All that's right. gonna be that's gonna be i would not put it past them <laughs> to kill them off one by one just it like that well they already started so right so heck yeah, yeah one's already gone so it's just like they bust into a thing. Record holds the door open. Oh, smashes the record's gone. Then, then Crosshair stays like, back, throws his yeah. mirror, things. Pew, 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 pew. Do, 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 yeah. do. Gets surrounded by a bunch of guys. He's gone. Yeah. Echo gets his hands stuck in the Echo thing. Echo stomps it. Yeah. <laughs> droid, stuck in the thing. Breaks it off to get free. He puts, his, he puts his scomp link in the wrong hole and just. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah. and then and then Hunter, Hunter is probably hanging from pushes on some, Omega on the side of a building. The floor, and, like Doom, Omega's is holding his hand, holding him up, and she can't hold him up. And he's like, "Just he's let, like, me go. let me go." Yeah. <laughs> Same thing as Tech, though. That'd be messed up. <sighs> Damn, brutal. Emotional damage. Everyone in the chat, pain, <laughs> crying emoji. I'm telling you, it's not, dude. It's gonna happen. <laughs> Just ruined everyone's night. It is gonna happen. I am sorry, uh, people. Hunter, Hunter is. Uh, that's what you said was gonna be holding the hand of Omega, right? Yeah. yeah. He's like, he's like Omega, execute Plan Ninety Nine. And then she's like, "What's I that?" And he's like, that. "Psych." <laughs> Like this, <laughs> damn, that's brutal. Sorry, oh, man. Man. all right. Sorry, Next week is uh, episode 14, second to the last one, Flash Strike. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I mean, week, I guess. Who, who really thinks they just end up on Pabu with their feet up eating sushi? Like, <laughs> you really I think that? I can hope, man. <laughs> you think they all go there and hide? <laughs> Damn. And then I mean, all these wars and things happen and they're like, nah, that's cool. A happy <laughs> ending. Yeah, they're like, we're we're skipping. We're not soldiers anymore. We gotta eat sushi. We're raising a kid. You know what I'm I mean? Eating sushi. Yeah. They're like that's the badass sweet. warriors ever. And they're like war veterans. Yeah. They're like, we're we we fought we're, our war. We're done. We're good. Rex Rex is in there getting it done. Rex no, is no. still in that right. He did. Rex, Rex like Rex, was you're just on chilling. Right. Went back into it, yeah. Yeah. Not my war. Yeah, Ryan. Not my war. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. Yeah, it's like, oh, Death Star just sips on some tea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm busy. Why did you make me do this? I guess you have a choice. You want a war? Or do you want to just give me a gun? My father. Ego toilet on my hands. Oh my God. Urine oh is 35 God. degrees Celsius. Oh staves God. off the frostbite. How is this relevant? You know, fathers. That's right, everybody. Um, it's been a it's been a minute since we did a, a Hunter's hard drive, I think. Um, and this week we will be talking about the new show on Amazon, Fallout. That's right. Another video game adaptation. Uh, this one uh, just just aired recently, 2024. Came out April 10th, first episode. Um, it's on Amazon, like I said. And all eight episodes are available for streaming. It's not a weekly thing, so you can binge it if you want. Um, I'll just say a few things about it. Then I want you guys to talk about it, because I know a few of you have finished it, and some of you have started it. Um, so, I, I, I mean... If you could avoid the spoilers, that'd be great. But otherwise, whatever. We can, yeah. Um, okay, but um, I, I'm like halfway through the show. I'm on the I'm on the fifth episode now, and I'm just happy that they were um, that they were were respectful of the source material and that they honored it. And and apparent from what I hear, the showrunners were like avid players of a few of the Fallout games. So. Um, I was, I, so far, at least I'm very happy with this unique story that they're giving us. Um, the humor's on point. I, I think a lot of the stuff looks really good. The the power armor looks amazing. Everything's practical. Shout out to legacy effects for working on those. Um, and we, we know a few people that had, you know, that have their fingerprint in that. So that's pretty cool. Um, but I, I want to hear from you guys. Just because you know, because a couple of you have never played, Brian, you have played. Um, but but, but uh, go ahead, uh, you guys have control of the board, so I'll let you pick a face and then why don't you guys start talking? There he is. I have played the game, the game is complete garbage. No, it's uh, <laughs> a fun game, um, it's just extremely frustrating the way the game it's just the game. Well, you played out. Fallout 76, right. Yeah, it's just how it that's works. a specific game. Yeah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. They're not um, all exactly like that. It was the biggest time suck in my life. Um, <laughs> but I like the story. I like the concept. I like the whole thing behind the game, and I feel like the show gives me that vibe of what I had in the game. 
Um, I like the actors, what they're doing. I like the different characters. Um, for those who haven't seen it, Power Armor, you know it's going to be in there if you've seen Fallout, so it's not really a spoiler. Um, the actors that are in it are great. I, I've been really enjoying it. Um, it's gross in times, but but yeah. it's also... It's not a kid show. No. Not for but kids. But it's also almost like fake like it's obvious like the grossness you know um and it gets worse as it goes on too but uh um i like the costumes i like the sets i like the design um i get the same feeling as i get from the game um with a little bit more embellishment yeah they they, they add their own twist to making certain a story things. out of it sure. right um the game is is the game is really dark like very dark so um this has humor and stuff in it um the power armor is damn near amazing it's like the best part yeah um, the power armor is amazing <laughs> the the ghoul he's he's in like the first episode right or second episode mm-hmm. he's awesome character so i finished it um we were talking about watching things um i watched the first episode saw the second episode and my wife Tori watched it with me and she got sucked in. So we got sucked in. So we were watching like a couple episodes a night for the past week and just blowing through it. And so, cause it's every episode ends. It's like a bad batch. The episode ends on a like, <laughs> and you're like, it's one of those, like, oh, let's watch another one. Watch another one. Watch another one. What time is it? You know, yeah, <laughs> kind of thing. So yeah, but it's fun. I like it. Fun show. I know. Uh, same thing, dude. We, my wife and I, we started it and we were just hooked from the first episode. Um, and then we just, yeah, two, one or two episodes a night. We finished it on, by Sunday. Um, I absolutely loved the show. I've never played the game. And I know the game's been out since like, what, 90? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven the fran- or 90, the, the whatever. franchise goes back a while. Yeah. Um, I mean, I literally have no idea what Fallout is. Like, I got coworkers that are like, their whole desk is has got the Fallout, the uh, the Vault Kid, Vault Vault Boy, with the thumbs up thing. Nice. Uh, one of my other coworkers, he like actually wore the Pip Boy, the little yeah, uh, little yeah, yeah, computer Pip thingy. Boy. Yeah, he wore that to work one time, and and they're just like so into it, and I'm like, I literally have no idea what the heck fall yeah the design's I, have no, cool. I have no idea what fallout is so going into the show um i i wasn't prepared for what i was gonna experience um i don't want to talk too much about like the behind the scenes like uh, drama that's going on of you know the different camps of who are like you know the the fans of the show versus the fans of the the games and the, you know oh i mean it's like any i feel like any franchise nowadays you're you can't have, please everyone yeah 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 um but that being said you know i appreciate i can i can tell by watching by i can tell by the quality of the of the show that the writers the showrunners the directors um appreciate the source material and so when john you when you told me that you know they they go way back it's very uh evident in in the production um one of the things that that i i will address is that you know some of the i guess quote unquote og fans of the fallout franchise they say that this show is not true to the original uh canon and it's leaning it's leaning more towards the bethesda canon which is the new studio that took over the franchise but and, and i mean that's a valid that's a valid point that's kind of like saying you know like uh disney versus george lucas original stuff right like i i i understand where they're coming from but also bethesda mm-hmm. has produced more fallout material yeah and the other original material combined that's what i was gonna say 
Yeah. It, you know, it, they've done almost all the games. So it's like, right. Get tough. Like, if you don't like it, go play and, the old games on PlayStation or something. And in their defense, as good as they've made this show, they've got someone like me who had no interest in Fallout prior. Mm-hmm. Now I'm looking into it and I'm YouTubing like the whole story so that I can catch up so I can play the games. And so I can Im- immerse myself into this uh, <laughs> uh, franchise. And, and, and like I was trying to tell you before, like if people want to maybe YouTube the lore of the vaults or the lore of the fallout universe in general, it's super interesting. It's super, super um, convoluted. It's very, there's so many layers to peel back. It's, it's, there's, it's an almost an infinite amount of, of information. So like, if you want to go down a rabbit hole, fallout is a good rabbit hole to just, 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 just YouTube the vaults, like what each vault was or something like that. Cause there's, it's crazy. And, and like, like I think Brian said, the game is super dark. So whatever you look up on YouTube, is going to most likely be from the game. And, and it's like, the show is doing a good job of translating a lot of that, but it's, it's still sugarcoating a lot. Um, because it's entertaining because it's dark no no the show's great I, yeah i have i have no yeah, idea, yeah, yeah 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 but go on yeah ramelay camelot um so i'm one of those one, i i never played any of the games um i have i have watched the i watched the first episode and i'm i'm into the second one um so I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. I, I'm watching it just as if it's a show and has nothing to do with the game or whatever. I, I kind of yeah. don't look. I, as John knows, as much as he's tried to talk me into getting into Hell Divers and I'm helping with these costumes and stuff, <laughs> it takes an act of Congress to get me to actually sit down and play the game with, with them. <laughs> um, it's, it's true. The, every every night they're like, "Are we Hell Diving?" And then just like, oh, yeah, Ramy's like, he just leaves the conversation. So, yeah. Okay. It's, it's fine. He's like um, Homer into the bushes. Tr- <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like trying, got, and, and that's more than I can ask for. That's it. We got, we got. I've just never been a huge gamer. Like, like not for games that are like a commitment like that. I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but the show. I like, I like the premise of the show. I mean, anything that's kind of like sci-fi or whatever. Like I mentioned, I was like watching like Three Body Problem and and stuff like that. Like, so those shows always catch my interest, and I, I like, I like the campy nature. That goes with this like the yeah, fact the, that like there's this campy, whole yeah. there's this whole yeah. like western 1950s western vibe yeah. going through the all atomic of it age type thing yeah yeah it's um uh, i i like it i like that the mashup of that aesthetic so um that's how i'm enjoying it I'll, i'm gonna keep watching when they're know, rolling through la like all the different like yeah la and spots that's, it's like and Randy's that's another donuts thing and like yeah yeah and that's another thing. So this story is unique to the show. So Vault 33 is not a vault we've heard of in the franchise before, as, as far as I know. So if someone knows, correct me if I'm wrong, but no. Because uh, uh, all the other games have, they focus on different vaults. And this is what a lot of people were upset about too. It's like, oh, another vault dweller leaving the vault, you know, another vault, uh, you know, another person leaving the vault and, and, and wandering the wasteland. It's like, well, that's kind of the whole point of the show of the franchise you know it's like you leave the vault like innocent and clean and un you know unscathed and pure and you go out into this irradiated wasteland and and become corrupt and scarred and and just to survive you know and it's like you you see the journey that all these different people go through and that's kind of the point of of you know the games in general obviously but just in the franchise in general so for people to be upset that it's like oh another person leaving the vault it's like well what would you expect? I'm, you know, I'm really, I'm really pleased with what uh, Amazon Prime, Amazon Studios, is doing for these shows. Because okay, so you got like Netflix Studios, and Netflix was like going down this whole thing of of trying to make all these anime shows live action, mm-hmm. and so far, I think up until maybe uh, Avatar. Uh, they haven't really hit it. Like the Cowboy Be, I, I'm a huge Cowboy Bebop fan. Yeah, some of the live and, action adaptations have not been. Yeah, up to snuff. Yeah, but Amazon, dude, nailing it. In Rings of Power, everything. Now, now this, I'm actually really excited. 
so Fallout, the quality of this show has got me excited for the the Warhammer series. Is that Amazon because, too? Yeah. And <sighs> and uh, what's his name? Yeah. Uh, Henry Henry Cavill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's not only the showrunner and executive producer. He's starring I, in it, right? I, I, he's starring in it, and he's like writing it, and he's like doing everything for this show. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, like I know absolutely nothing about Warhammer. Same, but, but I'm interested. I, I'm gonna go into the yeah. I'm gonna go into this like with <laughs> just like same... you guys with Fallout. Yeah, yeah. And you know what's crazy too? Because Amazon used to be. Like I would go on because we've had Prime for a while, so I'd go on the the you know the Amazon Video once in a while, and it'd be like documentaries, old movies, like b- old black and white movies, like the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly stuff like that. It was never new stuff, or it was like conspiracy theory, alien, you know, UFO stuff, and it was like whatever. But now, like you said, Stephen, they've stepped up all of their programming, all of their original shows, or they're all tens, uh, uh, you know, for the most part, like The Boys, uh, Invincible. Uh, rings of power like you said now um now um, v, uh, yeah v, do you, they've, all, they've all been hits yeah they're, they're they're banging them out and they're they're all succeeding so uh, we need to we need yeah. to pitch a show to amazon because then we could make our own show well let's go <laughs> we could get we could get joe to write it What's it about? I don't know. He'll use Joe GPT. Just use Chad. Yeah, he'll just use okay. Chad. Starring John, Ramey can produce it. There you go, Brian. What do I do? You can proof Brian, read the script. Yeah, sounds good. Craft services, cooking with crosshair. <laughs> yeah. Craft services. You can you can weather all the props. There you go. Black white everything. That's what I would do. <laughs> all right well i think that's gonna do it for us today uh, oh wait i should ask you john so are you keeping this on the hard drive oh yeah absolutely yeah, I, I think it's a uh, everyone agrees it's it's staying yeah all right well i think that's gonna do it for us today if you enjoyed listening be that algorithm and leave a five-star review on your podcast app be sure to include that cake emoji in the review uh if you're watching on youtube do all the youtube things like Subscribe, ring the bell, whatever that means. You're supposed to smash that button. Sma- smash that, smash that like button. button. Um, and thank you for the super chat. Uh, one. Oh, did we miss one? I lost it. I lost it. I can't scroll. Oh, dang. I'm looking. Uh, you can follow yeah. me at Stevie. Stevie.cakes on Instagram, sometimes on X and Threads. Gentlemen, let the listeners know where they can find you. Brian? Sithin ain't easy. It's tired. John? Uh, you can find me uh, at the Anakin and Tech Racing shirts that you could buy from Instagram.com slash Dune. That, Dune. right? And and you can find me at Gaucho Thank Props you. on IG. Thank you, Steph. And Ramey? I am. Uh, you can find me at the newly rebranded um, Pabu, <laughs> Pabu Frick dot, or Pabu Frick at uh, on Instagram and the dadbatch dot com. And yeah, Ramey's new for brand. Yeah, just wait. And of course, you can find Joe at Tech dot Bad Batch. Um, thank you, everybody, for listening to episode eighty eight of the Dad Batch podcast. Want to say a special thank you to these L Emily L. Lacey F, Ryan K, Brett L, Lucas L, Elisa V, Taylor N, Maggie M, Eric F, Harry B, Angela F, Joe B, Jenna B, Kelsey K, Kimberly E, Rachel E, and Stephen T. Thanks for sending those emails. We are going to reply to you uh, eventually. Yeah. Just be sure to tune in next week for episode 89. And until next time, enjoy your spice responsibly.